when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. not true it doesn't matter what's true it matters the story they tell when you're gone I keep on pushing down my man i i tell you i missed that old name with a shadow but you know life goes <laughs> on i should i should update i guess that intro but one day i will guys look at what we have look at all these content creators we have on the panel today creators. we got we got man we got mitchell cole we've got uh connor we got dr Wu, who everybody creates content uh but mitchell cole man i gotta tell you something right off the bat i like your stuff uh, i'm gonna tell you something because one day Thank you. connor goes hey i got some stuff for you to check out and i'm like all right and uh so he sent me you know all the links, and you had that one called. Uh, if, hope I say it right, derelict. And I, I you know, I, the first thing in my mind, I was thinking, oh, I want to. What's what this horror movie is about? You know, I, I thought it was going to be, gonna be like, like horror. You know, Connor with the Void Cat. We we always talk horror movies and stuff. So I'm like, man, I'm I'm, gonna t I'm curious about this horror movie. And I'm like, it's a different kind of a horror movie. It's like, <laughs> this is real life horror. I mean, this is stuff that I've seen growing up. Bob, you've seen growing up in yeah. California yeah. with, with needles and stuff. And and I told Connor what makes yeah. what makes these so well done is is when you do a drama. I mean, this is just an outside. I mean, I'm not. An, I'm not an expert. I'm not a movie expert and none of that kind of stuff. But, but when I look at these kind of movies, what well, make these work is the actors. Of course, you you act you act yourself. You're an actor, and you guys pulled it off. I mean, it was it was like I don't usually like watch hour and thirty minutes of real real realistic because I know in real life that happens and I've seen it. Yours had the, just the perfect amount of minutes, and it kind of brings me back of <laughs> seeing that stuff really happen in life, where how desperate people get when they're on a substance like, like you you do things that you really don't do because the character is a nice guy. He's a nice guy, but he's so addicted. He's lying, not lying, and try to. And I've seen this personally where where. People who need money, they call the mom, not the dad, because the dad's like, <laughs> hell no. But if I get the mom, yeah. I can maybe get some. And then, of course, some bad things happen. I mean, can I ask you, because uh, I don't know I don't know you personally, are these stories that you have that you've seen them personally happen? Or this is just a, a vision of a story you had? Well, I mean, it's definitely based on, like, things that I have seen uh not necessarily based on a true story itself, but inspired by uh, multiple stories. Yeah, I mean, uh, where I'm from, that's kind of like a common thing. You know, uh, uh, meth, meth is really bad. There's a really bad uh, epidemic. Right? I, it's been here so long, it's not an epidemic anymore. It's just a way of life almost. And it's kind of <laughs> sad. But, um, but yeah, so I definitely know a, a, quite a few people who kind of inspired Adam's story and they're like, when, and what I'm, oh, hold on. 
Let me let me take that square off because it's covering you up. Let me let me take that off. Let me take it off here. Here we go. There we go. Um, what what guys? The movie we're talking about is this one, and I'm gonna uh, put a link. I'm gonna put a link in it, so you guys in the chat, you guys can click on it, save it, and you can watch it. It's right there. Okay. Got it. And just that shot right there, like, gives me goosebumps because just down that road is me. I'm, like, right over here, guys. You can kind of almost see me. Uh, so it's really <laughs> cool that such a quality movie uh, was made in my town. And me, I'm, like, a little movie nerd. So, you know, I look out my window and I see the water tower. And I'm, like, that's in Deerlick. And uh, it's just so cool that I've uh, got to know the director of it and hear some of the, the inside stories. And look at this guy, man. He looks like a, a true freak in the movie, and then you know, he's like a shapeshifter because he looks presentable here uh, for the camera. You know, it's, it's really wild, man. You really turned into somebody else for Adam. It was so cool to see. And I like that guy in the couch, dude. He, I don't know where you found him. I don't know. It's weird. He's, he plays it like cool, simple, yeah. so believable. I, I don't know who yeah, he is, dude, but that that guy is killer. Uh, his he name is, is uh, Paul Reed. He goes by the Beast. He does music. He's from. Uh oh. Oh shit! We lost him. We lost him. But yeah, oh. back. he's coming back. He's coming back to life. We're still on here. All right, he's Everybody's back. Everybody's kind of okay. We got you. Okay. Right. Here we go. I got you. Uh, but anyways, like I was saying, we wanted somebody kind of tough looking, and 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 the Beast. He's a tough looking dude. So I was like, hey, uh, I sent him the sides. I said, send me a self tape. And he sent one back. And it was uh, him like sitting on a couch exactly how he was in the film. So it fit the vision perfect. And he nailed the audition, man. And he did a great job. I mean, he, he killed that role. Well, a lot of people know right. who I'm not saying everybody seen this lifestyle, but Bob, we've seen this lifestyle. And, and the toughest people, they don't always act tough, you know. They're playing no. games or they're, they're high, but when they're, they're ready, they're ready. <laughs> they're high. <laughs> <laughs> they're not tough. They're just high. <laughs> yeah. And, I, I like the one part. You pull the gun up. Like, you know, he's sleeping. You put the gun right to his forehead, and you're like, do not move. And then, you know, a couple seconds later, he, he reaches down for a lighter and sparks his blunt right there. <laughs> yeah. We, we got a good kick out of that next door just like 15 minutes ago. It was awesome. Now, is it is it hard to, because you're a director, you know, because you are you the actual director or you just played in it? You direct yeah, no, team, no, right? I'm directing. Yeah, yeah, so, we're, there's like a short, a short of direct director, so yeah. In a way, directing yourself because you know you gotta you gotta do retakes. You're like, okay, do this part again. How is it? How do you evaluate yourself when you're also the director? Oh, I'm always curious hard. about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird because I've actually been in everything I've directed until my last short, the one that we did after Derelict. And it's like night and day. So like when you're directing yourself, you're, you're kind of just uh, using everything. You know, you're communicating with actors, but in the scene, you're kind of like directing from within. So you can like uh, deliberately do different things to try to get different reactions and whatnot. Uh, so so it's actually kind of neat because it's like uh, – you can directly influence the scene without having to wait till the takes over. And then, Hey, let's try something different. You know, you can try something um, like while you're shooting. So uh, it's actually easier, I think to uh, just, just do it yourself instead of having to direct somebody else <laughs> until you get what you're looking for. But the hardest okay. part now is that you can't see what you're doing. So uh, that's why my, my producer, Wesley, he'll, he'll kind of watch. And I'm like, I trust his judgment. Like, well, did that work? Do we need to go again? And he, he's pretty good. And then wow. anybody who's watched it, I liked it how you linked, you know, you're selling that guitar for money and, you know, you're telling the guy, you know, you didn't take it or nothing, but then you linked it to the end where that guy walking by the car, I'm like, oh shit, that's the guitar owner. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, that's pretty good. I, yeah. I like that. That guy looks burnt out. <laughs> Thank you. Well uh, done. And Bob, that's him. Oh, that's you. I can't tell. Dude, I couldn't tell it was you. That's him. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you look junkied oh, out. Man. <laughs> yeah. Is that the mess? Yeah. Is that mess right there? Okay. Yeah, yeah. my girlfriend yeah. did the makeup. 
Good job. Yes, yeah, my girlfriend did the makeup and the bloody nose. She killed it, man. She killed it. Yeah. I mean, in this situation, for me to say, man, you look like shit. It all fucked up is actually a compliment to the makeup artist, to all the people, because that's what you were trying to get. It looked wow, it looked real. <laughs> yeah. What'd you guys do for yeah, the I got had a rough shot? night? <laughs> uh, that was that was CGI, unfortunately. I don't like doing I'll try to veer away from it, but that was what we had to for that part. Hey, I so honestly, go, like, you can't really tell yeah, that it's definitely put in there. It looked real. So that was a green room. That was cool, all green. Cool. I'm glad room. it looked real. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Eric and I, Eric and I, did our movie. Uh, it was all green yeah. screen. We did all of ours green <laughs> screen. The whole fucking thing was green screen. <laughs> you it's mean so that easy. professional movie? We didn't go that quite that far, but yeah. You know, and this one, guys. What's up, uh, people? The chat. He's got this other one. It's called Lords of Leakin County, and this is kind of a. It's kind of a. A cool story because you, it's kind of wrapped in real life. I noticed your movies are like based in real life, where the guy's brother, your brother, his girlfriend's gonna have another child, second kid, you know, and you need money. And people be surprised what yeah. you would do when you really need the money, when you oh, got yeah. family, you got people to take care of, and how he's trying to recruit you, and you're like the like the smart one, like no, <laughs> dude, stop it. Get, you got a whole, you got, you got kids. You don't want to go yeah. to jail. But you also decided to, to go, you know, you had a situation where you felt like pressure and, you know, your brother's pressure. And I don't think people realize what you would do under pressure when you need the money, especially for your wife and kids. I mean, love is, is will make you do crazy things. So is this a love movie? No, no, no. It's um Yeah. No, no, they're they're marijuana sellers. I mean, oh, awesome. Well well in, in Florida, there's different counties that you can't buy it. Some states you can buy it, some states you can't That's true. know that. That's very true. Oh, it's, right. and, uh, it's his movie, yeah, let him tell it. <laughs> yeah. So some counties can't I mean, we're from I mean I'm from, from I'm Californian. I mean, marijuana has been around since I was a kid. It's even even illegal. It wasn't really the cops just give it, hand it over. Um, nobody went to jail. Nobody got in any trouble. But there's counties like you said over there in Florida. People go to jail yeah. for <laughs> joints, man. I can't even fathom someone going and sitting in a jail cell for a joint. <laughs> so that's what it is. Is that's that's what it is down there? Like, right? Is it's like uh, it's still criminal? Yeah, yeah. That was like kind of the. Yeah, that was kind of like the reason we made it to uh, the, the, the whole story. It's kind of like I thought it was very unique. You know, our area, we're like way behind. We're 50 years behind the rest of the country. You know, the Bible Belt. And wow. we're, we're like the part of Florida we live in is a lower extension of uh, Alabama, basically. So, wow. uh, yeah, like like in South Florida now, you get caught with weed. It's kind of like it's decriminalized, I think. I think you might get fined. I'm, I'm not sure. But like uh, where, where we're from, it's, it's gotten a little better. But like a few years ago, yeah, man, like you would still get busted for, for a joint, oh really. So. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and that's and that's why we, we, we didn't even want to put the title at the beginning, like the whole backstory, you know, but we're like. You know, like if anybody in another state sees this, they're going to be like, what the hell? Because pot's been legal for how long now? You know, like yeah. we're from California. <laughs> so, like, yeah, we had to give that context before we could even show the rest of the film. God, man. Well, guys, we got a donation to the show, so I got to show this. <laughs> I want to thank Anthony. That was Anthony from Identify S4. He didn't have to do that. But thank you so much. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was in England, and there they legalized CBDs, and they opened up a lot of shops. So everybody's CBD in it, and also there is an underground marijuana, uh, you know, market going on. And they just now started to relax, where it's still illegal, it's still criminal, but unless you're carrying a big bag of weed, they're not going to mess with you anymore. So a lot of places are changing. Um, that's that's kind of cool. Even overseas now, a lot more freedom. <laughs> now, see, this is why I, I like this because there's a scene where you and your brother, there you're going, you know, to 
get the dealer to buy some. And everybody knows that, maybe everybody knows, I mean, not a lot of people know, when you go meet a dealer, you don't go just make a deal right away. There is there is a technique you're supposed to sit down and chit chat. I mean, lot everybody even know that. Bob will tell you know that. <laughs> yeah, I don't like hanging out with no dealers. I was always like, oh, you want me to hang out with you, man? I don't want to hang out with you. <laughs> but in this but one, you gotta hang out with them. <laughs> you gotta hang out. So in this one, what's cool is you got a one brother who wants to do it the right way, and then your character, the other brothers just wanna. Here's the money. Get the money done. Let's get the fuck get out the of fuck here. Out. I don't want to talk. I don't want this bullshit. <laughs> so you got like two different personalities sitting on that couch, and your one brother's like, "Shut the fuck up, dude." You know, this is the way you do things. This is how you, you know. <laughs> but I, I love how you did that. You, you caught that's real. That's real life. You, that's real life. You, that's you, real life. You got to sit there with the person that you're buying from. You just don't go there and show up because the first thing you, <laughs> you do that, they're thinking you have a wire. You're, you're They're watching yeah. you. Why you want to leave so yeah. fast? You know, and you're supposed to you get doing this in this movie where you're supposed to smoke a couple joints of the product. Absolutely. I mean, that's where... <laughs> We were used to seeing, you know. Yeah, you gotta brother, smoke like, weed with them. It all up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got you gotta sit down and smoke weed. If you go to your pot dealer, they want you to smoke weed with them, and they're gonna talk. And I, I'm a pothead, so I'm like, this is good. I want to know what I'm buying. Also, what is this? A hybrid? Yeah, this is a sativa <laughs> hybrid from blah blah blah. Oh, okay, smoking it with them, dude. I got a heavy buzz, man. This is a kind of a couch locker, isn't it? You know, you have that conversation with them. They know you know pot. <laughs> You come back and buy pot. They also know you're not stupid either. They're gonna sell you that nasty ass. And they know you're not a cop if you're smoking. No, you're not a cop. Yeah, it's it's like a way to break the ice, making sure you're not. Yeah. Why always did a great job? Whoever you got, they're playing that part. (laughs) I wish I'd encourage people that are coming off narcotics and coming off all those heavy things to switch over to marijuana. And it's kind of cool in a movie like this because this is the world they've got to (laughs) enter. The pot dealer, you know. And I'm gonna put the link yeah. to this movie too, because what happens, guys, is is I don't want to sp- uh, spoil. I'm gonna spoil some shit for you guys. You know, they're driving home and they don't, you know, you don't want to get pulled over. You got this, got this big <laughs> pound of weed. of weed. But of course, you know, in this story, <laughs> something has to happen where a cop <laughs> has to follow them. In the course, <laughs> that is such a nightmare. <laughs> That is such a normal nightmare. Dude, a cop behind us, man. We got a whole bag of fucking big bag of weed. You put it in coffee. Everyone's like, you've got a big thing of raw coffee. and You roll it and you put it in all in the coffee grounds. You're covering it up. You're having all these new. Everyone's holding. Everyone's sitting straight. Like, nobody hangs out like that, like a bunch of zombies in a car. Everyone's all nervous. Cops behind us, man. We've got weed. <laughs> Eat it. No, God, no. I'd rather give it to the cops and eat all that weed. So this is one of those scenes. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I, yeah. I, put, I put the link in the chat for that movie. You guys, could, you guys should watch it. This one, this one's a little longer. This one's for like 40 minutes, which is per, it's actually perfect. And Mitch, I want to tell you guys the twist. Is six, actually, he actually six, has seven. a twist. Yeah. What was that, Connor? What'd you say? Mitch, this took you six months to film uh, from beginning to end. It was like 45 minutes long. So that's, I look at it as like a feature length film. Uh, it's definitely not like a normal short, but you said about six mi- six months to make the whole movie? Yeah, it took, yeah, we started shooting that like in October. And we shot, this was the end of 2019. So you guys all know what happens next March. Oh, and we're still yeah. shooting this. We're shooting like the last two or three scenes. And uh, we had, like everything got shut down, and and we couldn't find a police chief. That that guy right there, that's actually the last guy we cast. And for oh, wow. <laughs> we finally got him, and we're like, hey man, like uh, we don't know what's going on with the world right now, but we want to finish our movie. So like, you want to shoot this scene or what? And he was cool. So uh, wow, and yeah, so it uh, six six months. And actually, we originally shot this to be like a, a television series pilot. Like we were going to like try to see where this could take us and try to get an episode two made. We have like a whole first season written, and then like you know everything happened in 2020, and this was like production hell. So uh, wow. we kind of pumped the brakes on that. And so 
uh, but it's still, I think I'm, I'm proud of it as a short film. Uh, if I could go back and do it all over again, I'd shoot another 30, 45 minutes and just do a feature film though. So. Well, you never wow. know. You might, you know, a studio might be knocking one day and say, Hey, we want to yeah. take that and make it into an hour and a half. Of you a never movie. fucking know. You never know. What was it? Uh, what was that? What was that movie? Uh, I can't. Uh, something Damon, whatever. The, uh, he was a, he's a janitor kid that's writing really smart shit at fucking Harvard, whatever. What's that called? Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, horrible movie. But anyway, I watched it. I I got through it, and it was a well put together. I mean, I I don't like it, but it was a good movie. I know it sounds weird. Yeah. Well done. Great production. Great ideas. The the everything. The script was fucking perfect. <laughs> but they just two guys, those two buddies, just put it together. Yeah, Ben Affleck and yeah. Matt Damon it wrote it in college. Oh. Well, remember, <laughs> Evil Dead started out as a twenty-minute thing in college. They college got picked kids. up and a bigger production. They took a twenty-minute thing and made it into an hour and a half movie. Sometimes that's how it works. Well, Rocky, uh, you know, Rocky was just uh, it was just his baby. You know, uh, well, Sylvester Stallone like, wrote that. <laughs> he just like wrote up, and it's real basic if you look at it. It's not a complex movie. It's fantastic. Sometimes simple is better. It's, Way better. It's, that's what I'm saying. It's the people who you get acting in it that sell. Yeah. It, you know. Yeah. But like let, a good porno. You, uh, uh, so, so Mitchell, when you get an idea, I mean, I don't. When we did a green screen movie, we did it for a penny. You know, we did stupid things on a green screen, but you're doing yeah. live Pretty shots. Definitely. You got people coming. Is this something that that you fund yourself, or you try to get back yeah. to help fund even us? Because even a twenty minute, forty minutes got to cost some money. God, imagine. Yeah, that like the last, money. the last one. Yeah, the last one we just shot. Actually, man, people like are mind blown. We tell them how much we actually spend. Man, we spent like a thousand dollars to make the last one we just made. Derelict, we shot for like two hundred bucks, man. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we shoot on thin, man. We try to sh stretch everything as far as we can. Uh, I'm not used to working with a budget and like, you know, resources. We basically take who we can get. It, it, we're we're still trying to meet new people because like where we live, nobody really wants to. Nobody's into doing film, you know. Especially when you tell them like, hey, we got to do it for free. Um, that's <laughs> usually a, a a deal burner. So you got to find people crazy enough that love film enough to help out. And it's their few and far between really. But, you got um, Connor. So, yeah. Yeah, no. And actually we just met Connor here. Uh, we haven't filmed anything since we met Connor. So oh. he's a new resource. Yeah. Put him in your roller decks. <laughs> We're actually like, looking dude, for we, with Connor. we need to find somebody. Just fucking get the roller decks out. We've got Connor. <laughs> Call him up. He'll fucking show up. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> or making, right. a, making a soft porn. Connor, are you comfortable with other men? Oh, God. <laughs> the <laughs> thing is, <laughs> Connor would give you it all. No money, no nothing, doesn't matter. Connor will give you everything he has. That's everything what, he has. You know, like like my favorite part in the boy cat is just watching him like sitting on the couch with his buddy and just like doing that smirk smile with the, <laughs> the boy cat DVD. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wow, you don't have to say words. But he said words in a way. <laughs> He's the ultimate stoner. Uh, I appreciate that. You know, it's all about the set and the environment, you know. But the last director I worked with did uh, call me uncooperative uh, the last oh. I heard. So, so Why? I'm going to, you know, knuckle up with that. Uh, but we filmed the rest of the movie <laughs> yesterday in my room. I figured out the answers. Uh, I wasn't uncooperative. I was the man with the no. plan. Joe. I know what it is. Bob, the stardom's getting to Connor's head now. It right? is. Yeah. It is. As soon as he gets yeah. to the eyes wide shut parties, he won't even know our names. Yeah. He's just gonna go into a room and have sex with some stranger in a mask, and he'll forget <laughs> about our show. He'll forget <laughs> about his friend Mike, Michael right here. He's gonna forget about all of us, man. Yes. All right, guys. And yes. you had to bring that up for a good reason because Eyes Wide Shut actually inspired one of Mitch's like horror movies uh it was a short film kind of a music video but when when mitch is behind the yeah. camera that thing is cinematic so that's a movie uh but yes his uh short film music video called shooting star is like really cool and i just rewatched it again and the twist at the end is super dope mitch and it's scary and drew kills it and the vibe is really cool and cassie yeah. is a scary witch and she looks like she has a mask on but your girlfriend 
did the makeup for the witches too and everything. It, it's wild. No, no. Uh, Drew's girlfriend Kayla actually did the makeup for uh, for Cassie's part in that film. Wow. But yeah, uh, you know what's crazy? I'm glad you said something about the twist because, man, I'm telling you, nobody got that twist. Like at the end, they're like. And I was like, come on, it's there. Just like, uh, I didn't think it was that hard. I'm glad you got it. Dude, oh, it, yeah. was, it was top of the line genius. You know, that was like the end of my favorite movies or like the end of Void Cat. You know, it's a, a mind fuck. It was awesome, man. I, I loved it. Yeah. And, and everybody in the chat, yeah. I got three of his movies in the description of the show. Because he has another one that was, it was cute. It was awesome. It's called... President's Day mattress cell, where uh, a regular guy going to go buy a bed, parked by this criminal that's actually is a nice guy, and gets in his car, yeah, he's a- takes him back to to his brother's place or his boss, his boss's place, and yeah. nicest criminal in the world. It kind of tells you like not all criminals are assholes, but uh, this boss was kind of an asshole. But but yeah, and then I love it at the end. Of it, I'm not gonna tell people what happened during it, but at the end, he ends up back at the bed because he's he went to buy a bed. <laughs> wow, that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, and he's got a lot more money to buy the bed with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I like this. I like quirky movies that are simple. I like those too. I think it was a. I can't remember the name of it. There's a movie about a tire. That's just rolling down a hill. Yeah. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, yeah I, it's, I, on, it's on HBO. Um, right, it's just rolling. <laughs> the tires just rolling. Yeah, it kills people. It's not slackers. Because the one about there's a one about pants that kills. <gasps> we people watched too. that one. There's this Eric and I found a movie. We like the cheese as cheese can get, man. I'm I'm a fucking diehard fan. We found a pair of pants that kills. Eric, was it a pair of pants that kills? Oh God. A, a, a woman's pants. A woman's pants that kills. Yes. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it though, man. Slap it. It's Eric's probably looking for it. It's it's, it's a oh, pair of yeah. pants that kills. Well, Those the are great. movie about the tires, rubber. Rubber. Yeah, yeah, that's as cool as like Night of the Lupus. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, how would your uh, President's Day sale mattress movie begin? Just off yeah. of the funny commercials that that tagline. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. And we wanted to make a film with with about something everybody knew but never really thought about. And everybody's heard of the President's Day mattress sale. It comes every year. You hear about it on the TV for a week, and uh, but nobody ever thinks about it. And it's like, okay, well, we'll just. I mean, that was that was that was how that whole movie transpired, just from that. That's cool, man. <laughs> and your character is pretty. Fired. Hey, I've got a movie <laughs> recommendation. What what is what is it? What's that? What's your recommendation movie? Oh, okay. It's called Blades. It's a Jaws spoof movie from, I think, the late 80s. Uh, it's directed by Thomas Rondinella. I met him at Orlando Film Festival. He's a great guy. Uh, it's it's a Jaws, It's about a, a, a killer lawnmower that attacks oh. the golf course. Like, have you seen it? It's on YouTube. You can watch it for free. It's The whole movie's on Why YouTube. Is that? But it's yeah, it's, it's, it's Blades, yeah. yeah, you have to check that one out. About a, a killer automatic fucking lawnmower that kills people. It just goes, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. Huh? It rings a bell for some reason. <laughs> it's, now we gotta it's great, find man. that clip. <laughs> we gotta find that clip. Nineteen eighty nine. Yep, that's it. Wow! Wow! Yeah, here I, I found it on IMDb. Bring it up Doctor on three. Probably played after one of your midnight showings. You know, it just rolled right into blades. <laughs> oh, I love that classic yeah, you got, you got poster. poster. <laughs> oh, it's, you guys are in the Evil good. Dead. It's it's definitely it's great. Oh, it's awesome. I was. What is this? The trailer? <laughs> um, it, it just it's on IMDb. The preview, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't. Oh. I don't play a lot of trailers because a lot of them are all copyrighted. Oh, that looks so good. Let me see. These are just pictures. We should uh, oh. play a couple of uh, Mitch's trailers. Yeah, we want to see a couple of Mitch's trailers too. We could do that. I'm just, I'm just curious about this blade. I don't know why. Blades. I'm this. Not, Blades. Not to be uh, mixed with blade. 
the vampire hunter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny because he says it's basically just him and his friends just wanted to make a feature. If my memory serves right, he told me the story and they kind of just made it for fun. And he said to this day, he gets like fan mail about that film. And it's just like that. That's kind of what he got stuck being known for was Blades. So <laughs> Wow. That's oh, that's cool. cool. Choose the right <laughs> teaser. Is that the one you talk about, Connor? Yeah, we should watch them all. But, uh, you know, yeah. this, 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 this is his show. show. This is his newest movie, uh, Choose the yeah. Right. And we'll let him talk about it after. But I got to uh, see an advanced copy of it, and it was mind-blowing. It was, it was so cool. And to watch a movie with the director, even when it's before it's released, that's like a special thing, man. Uh, I definitely cherish that. And I uh, doubled up in my filmmaking uh, qualities right there. But, yeah, Choose the Right. Let's see it. All right. Let's check out this trailer, people. Get ready. Get your popcorn. Yes. Get your stuff. Here we it's go. your weed. You're probably wondering why I got you here, huh? Yeah. Struck me as odd. I don't need you to take care of him. No. No, 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 no. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Oh my God. Choose the right. right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, was, what is this? This uh, is our latest this? project. It's 2021 director's reel. What's a director's reel? It's basically just oh. like a compilation video uh, of, yeah, just different like clips of the music videos that I've done, short films that I've done, all put together. Um, oh, wow. Let's check it out. But, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Not at once. Wow. Is that your entire budget? Did I hear? I'll take it. No. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> oh, shit! Your daddy told me you was on that shit again. I you know, can't believe how my dad says. I've been clean six months, man. I made a promise that I would not end up in prison. You made the same promise. I plan on keeping mine. What you do with yours, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to figure something out. I promise. Use your head, Leon. Think about the choice that you're making. Whoa. Whoa. <clears throat> what if you out your eyeballs and cut out your tongue? Then you can't see me to identify me and then tell the cops anything. Win-win. I hope you know you're not going to be right here alive. Nice. So all, all all your male actors have great hair. Um, how do you guys, How did you work that out? Did you? Did they yeah, have a, a special lot of that was hair? videos? Okay. I tell you what, I'm gonna call <laughs> Disney or actors with great hair ready for a Marvel movie. I think they he's all ready had for one a Marvel hair. movie, guys. He's ready. Uh, so I'll call. I think you should direct the next Fantastic Four movie. Yes. <laughs> yes, you should. Oh, really? 
Why not? I'm gonna let my agent know that's the next gig we're doing. <laughs> so, are you? Uh, 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 do maybe, you like maybe, the, maybe a fan film? <laughs> I want to. I want to see. I want to see what you directors get Eric in one of the movies. I want to. I want to see. <laughs> I'm ready. Now, I would love to watch Eric in a movie. <laughs> do you? Uh, 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 are you trying to do? I mean, what's your like? Like, because your your movies is realistic style. Are you ever gonna try to attempt to do I don't know like like a horror kind of a movie like a like a real horror or you're, you're... change the genre a little yeah. bit? Are you gonna yeah. change genres at all or yeah. do you like what you're doing right now? Okay, so like for right now, I'm definitely trying to do what can fit the budget. You know, like no budget, yeah. you basically shoot in your backyard or wherever you can. So that's a lot of the reason I think that uh, the style is what it is. Having said that, I really like the natural style and the and the kind of like uh, character mm-hmm. studies, just, you know, following somebody in everyday life, trying to show an interesting point of view of somebody that wouldn't normally be interesting. Uh, but I would like to do uh, something different. I have I have like a horror short written I don't have the budget for right now, but I would definitely like to try and pull that off. Um and yeah, uh, down the line, who knows? I'm not into superhero movies. I know I'm like a minority <laughs> there, but I'm not really. So I have like no interest in doing that. But I would definitely love to do a horror, uh, horror film and try to put my own spin on it. So very cool, man. Yeah, I'm those are some green screens. We could do one with some green screens. How about? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we did our horror movie with a green screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Eric had no Eric come I I got back from uh, uh overseas and I come over to see Eric and Eric's like I got a movie lined up. Okay, what do you have? <laughs> he just tells it to me. I said, "Okay, now I went to I, I went to I took a class, movie class whatever in college and we had to do storyboards. You know, I know the whole fucking routine so it's a pain in the ass, but I got a 4.0 in the class." So I go, "Eric, what do you have for a storyboard?" And Eric's like, "What's storyboard?" You got to draw a storyboard, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have something on paper. So Eric Eric did the squares, did it like a comic. I said, good, do the storyboard. Once he had the storyboard down, and then it become natural. Then it was boom, boom, boom. Uh, next square to next square to next square. Then it worked. <laughs> you yeah. know, making a movie is hard. People don't think, they walk up and just do it. No, you got to have a, uh, you got to have scripts. You got to have a storyboard. You got to have a beginning and an ending. You gotta have the whole, and then you gotta have all the time in the world to do it, and everything's done wrong, like for the first twenty times. So, <laughs> well, so let's take a um, l- well, let's take a look at one of my actors. Oh God, <laughs> this is one of my actors. Hey, Andy. last night was so good. Things you did, man. My ass still hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Top notch, right there, guys. Top that notch. is that is top notch. <laughs> that is top notch. I mean, yes. I mean, we got we got like the famous Bob scene right here. Yes, that's me. That this is like an Oscar moment right here. Uh oh. Lots of body parts. This is not something to be. It's not relevant. You see this? You see this? This is one of those graveyards that they fucking have bodies and cadavers come out for a student. And if you look at our green screen, we had no lighting. So you can see all the way behind me that horrible line coming <laughs> straight down. I mean, it's, I mean, we didn't know what we're doing. And then, of course, we got me, the famous Tyler. You know? And then, of course, the, the famous uh, 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 monster that comes attacks Bob. Right there, right there. <laughs> and so people know, didn't use no strings on that. No, no that strings. was pure, no uh, pure cinematography magic right there. And that was an actual erection I had. I actually had a green suit on. I had a green suit. I had to suit. work that up. I needed a I fluffer. I had a green suit on. I was like trying to camouflage with the green screen so you don't see me. Yeah, like, yeah. And I had to tell Eric, Eric, we need to come up with a budget money, too, because I need a fluffer. He was like, no, I can't just buy I need to pay for it. So we got a local gal up the road. It works. She fluffed. So the movie went. The movie worked. It takes a lot of staff. <laughs> and if people to make a staff. who has not seen that, there's a link to my one and only. <laughs> 
But one, it won no awards. I gotta watch the full version. It won no awards. <laughs> no, it won nothing. We were just fucking around. But, you but, know that, what? That, but, but that's what he say, does. I will say, you even though it's a pile of shit, but you do learn, like Bob saying, you know, the board, <laughs> how to do it. You know, so next time you do the next movie. You could do a little better, a little bit more organized. Yeah, you, know, you can yeah. see what didn't work, yeah. how the how you needed yeah. more lights, more of this. So there's even a learning process when you huge. A, a, no, it's not a piece of shit. It's a masterpiece. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a damn good movie. You guys should watch it. <laughs> but do you have a goal for yourself? Like, like yeah, what's your goal? Like, 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 yeah. like in five, ten years, I want to be here. I want to be here. What's your goal? Uh, my goal right now is to get a feature film made, whether it's financing it myself or, you know, getting getting financing from somewhere else. But short term goal is to get the feature made. And then a uh, long term goal, I'd like to be making feature films as, you know, uh, uh, my main source of income, you know. So when you get your stuff so, done, you got these short films done. Is there like a process where you try to get it? Like I know, like Connor told Boy Cat, they they put it in some yeah theaters, try to get people to win some awards and stuff. Do you try to do the same thing with your stuff? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Just uh, so we submit everything on Film Freeway into the film festival circuit. Um, like with Daryl, oh. we submitted to a lot of the um, southeastern United States. It's like Georgia, Alabama, and uh, Florida. Just trying to keep it kind of local. And with this next one, we're going to try to like branch out a little bit. But yeah, you just try to get some exposure and win awards if you can. Uh, the main thing for us was just networking, just being able to go to these film festivals, show what we could do, uh, see other films, meet other filmmakers, and kind of we actually met people in the festival circuit we collaborated with on the last project. So cool. we we accomplished our goal there. So that was cool. Yeah, I, I hear a lot of people they bring their movies to certain places. And the idea is try to get someone who like it and want to back yeah. it, buy it, or finance a newer one, a longer one. I mean, that's yeah. it's like buy and sell. It's it's you're selling yourself. <laughs> it's a gamble, man. Right. It's a heavy industry, man. <laughs> it's a lot of competition. And that's kind of what the the next project we do is going to probably be is more geared towards like, hey, this is less of a watch this because it's good, and more of a watch this and imagine what a feature could be. So we're going to have Connor on board for that one. So we're looking forward to it. Hey, I can't wait, man. I'm so excited. Uh, what, what awards and honors has Dear Licht and you won uh, through these film festivals? Uh, I've got them on a shelf back here. I'm not going to go bring them down. But uh, so Tallahassee Film Festival, we got uh, the audience choice for uh, best suspense which was cool because that's like, hey, it's everybody that watched the movies voted on that one. So that one was special. And it was in Tallahassee, cool. which is close to home. Uh, Very cool. Southern Film Festival, which is put on by a guy named Eric Wright. Uh, it's in LaGrange, uh, Georgia. And uh, I, I received the Best Actor Award at that festival. And then uh, there was uh, 15 Minutes of Fame Film Fest there in um, – Somewhere in South Florida, I don't remember the city. I, I hate that I can't remember it, but we, we won best drama. And then cool. we also won best drama film at uh, New Florida Cinema. And their, their, their film festival is kind of unique. I would recommend any uh, Florida filmmaker submit to them because they do like a monthly uh, event where they screen all the selections from that month. And then at the end oh. of the year, they take the top five and they have a like it's kind of like a playoff system. That's and, cool. And that was really cool. Yeah. So it's like a year year long thing instead of just a one, you know, once a year. It's like Battle of the Bands with the with movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It really is. That's but yeah, cool, we had man. a lot of success. We we didn't really I mean, like I said, we shot it for two hundred bucks right here with people we knew that weren't uh professional actors. Everybody was first time actors for the most part. And uh wow. Really, really happy with how everything turned out. We got really lucky, I think. So, I mean, what you, you were talking about that uh, going into horror. You don't want to give away the idea. Would you? Is there any? Can you give us a hint of what you were thinking? What's in your mind? I mean, what's your horror concept? Is it a killer something yeah, or is it a. It, a it's more tomato? or less like a secret, 
like a secret society, like uh, the the the, the, high, the the higher powers, you know, and what they do in their own time. Wow! <laughs> I see, I see Connor getting excited. Uh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna be in that. I can't wait, man. I am so pumped. And speaking of uh, horror, didn't you just get the lead role in a feature film coming to Tallahassee? Uh, I, I don't want to spill the beans too uh, much, but yes. you know, yeah. It's 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 not a, it's not confirmed, but it's it's in the works. Hopefully, it's in the bag. Hopefully. <laughs> I read that role. <laughs> well, uh, you don't want to give us that information, though. Probably not. <laughs> you know, what role was it? Yeah, or I'm, is not, it a... I'm not sure. Yeah, good, good. Okay. <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a feature film. Uh, it's not 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 anything. Not a project of mine, but uh, yeah, I read for the role. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to talk about that one. Yeah, so don't do it. I'm just gonna yeah, say don't wanna... I read for a role. Yeah, yeah. We don't want to be the show that crashes your opportunity, dude. So don't do it. <laughs> That's why I'm asking yeah, permission. No, for... I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> no, no. We'll move forward. Moving past this. Move I would tell you, it. but I don't know. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> but see, but see, if you, something goes bad, but I... then you can really blame us. You could, you know, we'll take the blame for you. We've ruined a lot of careers on this channel, so <laughs> yes, and and some careers have exploded. Because of our channel, out there, some fucking guys that got really big. <laughs> You're like, God damn, remember yeah. us? No, yeah, we got a buddy who's got to deal with the streaming service. And yeah, oh kinda, my god, kind of forgot who who helped him out, brought him on air, but you know, it just is a what common it is. guy. Yeah, it was just a common dude, cool as fuck. He started doing, uh, I don't want to give it away information, but he was doing a show. He was commenting on a particular uh, TV series that was on. He was, And then pretty soon he got recognized. He had real people, fr backup people from the show coming on his show to calling in. We're like, dude's doing it. Next thing you know, a streaming service hires him to be like the professional super fan of the show and have other people that were on the show come on to his show like, I'm like, dude, he's just a regular guy. This is awesome. Wow. That he is crazy. Moved he moved up. Eric, how's he doing now? Is he or is he failing now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I think he's doing pretty good. I mean, I, he's actually yeah. he's actually um um I actually got a part for him for uh my episode three cartoon. So he is oh. gonna be reappearing. So, you know. You know, really yeah, cool. you know, Mitchell, you might not know this, Mitchell. You know, we're 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 doing content creating ourselves. <laughs> we're doing cartoons. I <laughs> saw the first episode. I, I watched the premiere actually. Then I went back and rewatched it after I talked to Con Connor. Came it gave me a little bit of like the behind the scenes of it. I had to go back and rewatch everything. That was killer. <laughs> I'm looking for Con Connor said the second episode the aliens are going to probe him for like ten minutes. So I'm looking oh. forward to seeing that, man. Yeah, well, if everything goes right, next Wednesday is supposed to be the premiere night. Oh, so what do we do? Am I am next I week. am I allowed to do a voiceover? Am I allowed to be in there? Well, you, you kind of have to. I'm not, but I, I I don't tell nobody what they do in it. I keep everybody in the dark. <laughs> I think these guys are mad at me because I keep making fun of their vests in the uh, cartoon. <laughs> well, you just wait till you see what we do to you in this one. <laughs> Yeah, bitch in a cartoon. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, because you gotta you gotta do your you gotta do your dialogue, but you gotta have it within so many minutes. They got and Eric's like it's stop. So like you gotta say the yeah. sentence fast. Like, wow, <laughs> you gotta do that in five seconds. No, 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 we gotta do it in three seconds. I've got too much <laughs> things to say in five seconds. So take your long sentence, <laughs> cut it in half. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was one point that we did like five takes of you being creative, and I just was like, "No, you have to say this." It's like three words, and you're like, "Come on, I can't even." Come on, man, I can say so much. Like, it's funny. Really, this time, your mouth only goes like this. Dude, dude, we don't have time for that much else, bro. <laughs> Two seconds, uh, three seconds. God damn it! I got I, so much we could say in this scene. No, you got three hey, seconds. Hey, it's called acting. You got to yeah. pull it off. You got to do your part. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you made the cartoon first, then you do the dialogue, which you did like a rough, rough, rough draft with, the, with what people were saying. When you actually had the real characters come on there, like me, I've got my own opinion. Like, I don't want to say it like that. <laughs> I want to say it like this. <laughs> yeah. I, I, what I did is is I wrote out the scenes and the story. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then I have to watch on what mouse moves 
and you know, did I count for this character? Because sometimes, like the last one, there's a character I didn't even know he moved the mouth on. Like, oh, okay, I gotta get a voice for that guy, that guy. And this one's a little bigger because I got a lot more people in it, so it's gonna oh wow, it's gonna be more of a challenge because the last one, you know, it was only like four of us, us four. Yeah, this one's gonna, I'm gonna have about 12, 12, 12 people, people and stuff. Wow, it's so, a big cast. Yeah. Wow, it's a bigger cast. Yeah. Hey, we're, moving, we're moving big time. And, <laughs> and you're gonna will be calling. If we get some gonna... more funding, maybe we can afford Mitch uh, for a little voice role for episode three. <laughs> Oh my man! God. Wrong one. Hold on. How do... that's twelve people doing a line? That's a lot of people. Well, well, not all at once. By Wednesday, not all at once. Through throughout the cartoon, there's gonna be yes. something here, here, here. I can already you see know. Eric stressing out, man. Everyone's gonna have a line and change the line. Eric's like, God damn it! Just read the line the way I have it. Just read the line <laughs> well, the way no, I have actually, it. Actually, actually, like you said, we you learn stuff. When you did the first time, in this one, you know myself and Connor are just gonna get together, and we're gonna try to write out the script. So when everybody comes in, it's already done. Last time we all had together, and it's like, you know, when it's that's fine when you only have four of us, but when you got like a lot more people, well, people, I gotta, I gotta be ready because you know, or we'll be up all freaking six, seven well, hours. Just to put voices for a three minute cartoon. Yeah, I don't think you need to explain that to Cole. He was a director, so he he probably had to handle all kinds yeah, of cat stuff, people's personalities. He's got to incorporate their personality, the way they do things. He wants to use their magic with his magic. So you're like, that's that's a lot of work. You know what? Going through the <laughs> process, you start learning even more respect for people like Mitchell, because you know, just just doing a cartoon where you're not like directing people to move this, you're just directing just lines you know mitch yeah. gotta gotta direct this person that person move like this move like that do this and then buy the lunch you, you bought the lunch right you bought the you buffet know? i'm sure cole did you buy the buffet lunch for everybody all the staff <laughs> yeah and make sure everything's in focus okay <laughs> oh we're gonna hit with no yeah we had crap. pizza that's good pizza Oh, you got a spell. Oh, yeah, you got naked ladies. Oh, yeah, boy. Spamming. Yes. Yeah. 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 Of course, yeah. <laughs> I get it all the time. <laughs> they might be sincere, though. <laughs> Do not click their links, people. Eric's getting rid of them now. <laughs> yeah. And people were deleting them before I even get to them. So thanks, who's ever helping out with that kind of stuff. Yes. Because that, that people in the chat, you never want to click on that naked HD thing because. Apparently, when you click on them, they can lock into your account and take over your account. So be careful with stuff like that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're they're hitting all the channels, man. They're hitting everybody. So how long have you been doing it so far, Mitchell? Like, how long you been been doing the movie so far? Has it been five years, ten years? Is it oh, has it been a passion when yeah. you're a kid? Yeah, when we were like in middle school, uh, YouTube was kind of like getting big or whatever. So that's we started doing short films and putting them on YouTube. Thank God, I don't think any of them are still on there. But uh, like four <laughs> or five years ago, I think we we kind of my producer Wesley and I were like, "Hey, let's try it again as adults and, and and see if we can like actually put something together that that you know is is worth people watching." So very cool, man. Well, here's yeah. a question for you. Now you live in Florida, and of course, Florida is known for the skunk apes, the the, the Bigfoots, and all that. You ever thought one day maybe yeah. you could uh, um, you know, try to do a documentary on some kind of a not not necessarily cryptid or anything like that, but you ever thought about trying to do your own kind of documentary of mysterious yeah. things in Florida? Yeah, man, yeah. not really the documentary. Um, that that's not really like. Uh, that stuff really, I'm, I couldn't imagine devoting a year to, to anything really, you know, filming it. But uh, close to where I live, see, there's <laughs> Bristol, Florida. So that's Liberty County, Florida. They have the Apalachicola National Forest. And uh, there's a little community called Taloja. And I've met a few people from there, and everybody talks about Goat Man. And you ask them, what is uh -huh. Goat Man? It's half goat, half man. I mean, it's Goat Man. And these people swear. 
they they were and it's always from the oh, sorry same part of the train tracks everybody sees goat man and I, so i have thought like that like hearing the stories gives me chills so i'm like goat man that would be a that would be a good horror film you know like if it was yeah done correctly but so yeah, yeah that's the only time i've ever thought yeah but but uh yeah goat man so and would if you ever anybody consider... watching is familiar with goat man please tell me more would you ever I'm consider sorry. doing Otter Otter Man? That nobody wants to do Otter Man, and people like laugh at it. The idea that this thing exists. Would you consider Otter Man? I'm I'm not familiar <laughs> with Otter Man. I'm not familiar with Otter Man. Don't 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 chastise me. <laughs> Edu- educate me. What is Otter Man? <laughs> I'm we're joking because uh, all these wonderful uh, cryptids out there, and Eric and I one day. We're doing a show, and, was, and there's a fucking otter man. And I go, an otter man? Come on, dude. I'm done with this. Goat man, freaking this man, alligator man. Now we got an otter man? I go, I'm devoting my life to otter man. This is it. I'm done with Bigfoot. I'm just sticking with otter man. This has got to be the most outrageous cryptid I've ever heard of. <laughs> Somebody please go look for otter man. <laughs> That's the otter man's name is Kush Taka. See, he knows all about otter man. <laughs> yeah. How about this? How about this? So say a studio goes, Mitchell, uh, we're going to do a movie, but you have to do a remake. What? Any remake you want. Oh, what yeah. movie would you love to take a attempt at and put your own spin on it? Oh, shit. He's got to think now. <laughs> That's like oh, someone saying, what's your God, favorite man, you song? I, I have a movie. You got me there, man. Wow, that's a, a good question. If they, if they uh, went to me, if they what would you remake? Me, oh, I, gosh, I would say, man. I want the yeah, last Yeah, man, because I'm trying to think of like time. cult classic. Yeah. yeah. Any movie you want. <laughs> Hundreds of movies what, out what there. Series? Mine's The Last Starfighter. I would love to take The Last Starfighter and make a modern day Last Starfighter because 80s video games. Every kid's got a video game now. I mean, you could do so the much. The last Starfighter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I could see that. I would do that in a heartbeat. There's just Although something were, oh, to me about gosh. a story about the one person left to save the galaxy. Yes. It was you and them. I just love stories like that. You know, it's like you are the last person. Yes, Nobody last Starfighter. Else. Yeah, for sure. But he's still thinking about what 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 would be yours would be though. I mean, what would you, what's your favorite all time? Like, would you redo um, anything like Jaws? No, but Bob, uh, no, the question is, he has to pick one. That's not. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm saying he has to pick one. Yeah. And, and once he makes the remake, then he can make whatever he wants. That's just the the law of the studio says we're you do a remake, then we'll let you do any movie yeah, you yeah, want. Yeah, see, movie. I'm trying to think. He's trying to think of it. I would just uh, do a. Uh, how about this one, man? And I and and I would hate to do it because it's such a classic, man. And I I hate, I hate when they touch classics, man. I'm the same with you. I'm the same with you. But which oh, one? Oh yeah, is it? that that's a good idea. You're pulling from from way in the past. Oh, I didn't hear from that. Black Lagoon. That's a good one. Oh, it's a little delayed. I'm gonna go old Yeller. I'm gonna go old oh. Yeller. Oh, wow. wow. That's oh, a, put a, twi- put a, a twist on old Yeller, man! Wow, wow, wow! Wow! You know another good one? You know, uh, 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 try to do a remake <laughs> of. I think if you do it right, I don't know, man. Could. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yeah, you could do something great with that if you do it just right. But you could use. I would use bananas. Attack of the Killer Bananas instead of yeah. Tomatoes? I'd switch the vegetables around. I'd be a fruit. Well, no, tomatoes oh. now a fruit. <laughs> tomatoes now considered a fruit. But tomato rolls, uh, banana don't, don't really roll. Yeah, well, yes, they don't roll, do they? No, they won't roll right. I guess you huh. can tackle killer apples or oranges. Yeah, but they don't seem scary enough. How about Connor? Connor, if you have what? a choice to make a, a, a movie from a remake, what would you choose? Connor knows thousands of movies. I'd like to hear Connor's. 
Uh, I, I said creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Just to you keep know it simple, you know, I'm I, surprised. I saw all you guys really like working hard going into your mind, and I was just like, uh, yeah, just remake creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> uh, I'll be the kill man. Yes. Uh, swim after the pretty girls. Uh, we got it. I I do Smokey and the Bandit, but I would change the beer for like weed. Like they got to move weed. Smokey and the Bandit. They got to give one go. guy a. Yeah, fast fucking car, but he'd be like in a in a truck or something different. You know, and then what, he'd have uh, a truck full of weed. That could work because even the state you could buy marijuana, it's still federal laws against the exactly. Law. It's a lot you of laws still against. Have federal police after? Yeah, the exactly truck. what I'm saying. So you cross through like like one of the counties that, that that these guys are talking about where it's still not legal, and you got to get your truck through that county, and all the cops are looking for this truck with marijuana in it. You know. And then, um, then you gotta have the, you gotta have, you know, uh, smoke. Uh, the bandit, the bandit's gotta be in the front with his fucking fast car. <laughs> He's gotta get all the cops to chase him out of town. But actually, in the modern day, <laughs> actually, Damien, I think they are gonna be redoing the Blair Witch again. But oh, but you why? know, I know. I mean, why? Found <laughs> footage movies are better when you got a, a brand new script, a brand new story. When you try to take an already done found footage, they don't usually do a good job doing remakes off found yeah. footage. It's usually found footage got to be original story from the beginning that you don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I could be crazy thinking that. Yeah. I want to do a, um, a unique take on the whole. I want to do it like Platypus Man. You know, like with the duck bill, but he's a mammal, and I'm gonna have this guy as a character running around killing people. What do you guys think of that? Would that work, Platypus Man? Hey, they're poisonous. They, they're poisonous. I'm pretty sure platypuses have some kind of poison, and that's like makes them so unique. So honestly, wow, wrong gold with me. I did not know they were poisonous. So this actually adds to the story. Yeah. yeah. I guess they would secrete like a poison out of their bill, their their buck yeah. bill. Yeah, their duck I, bill. I might be mistaken, but I've always had poison and platypuses together. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Bob, if you got the passion, listen, <laughs> listen. They made Lego into a yeah. movie, and it was actually good. Yeah. You got well, the passion. You got the you got the right story and the right people. You can make anything into a movie. As well, it's long easy. As the passion. The, the, you know the right people and a good story for people to listen to want to listen to. Yeah, like a campsite, like a bunch of girls are like nude bathing. You got to have the you know TNA in the show. They're nude bathing and they come back in like, oh, it's been a lovely day. And then platypus will just like a large platypus which just crawls out of the water <laughs> and just chases the girls are screaming through the forest. They haven't even dressed yet and they're like running and the platypus is chasing them. Yeah. And they come across a guy with a machete. Ah. Listen, we could make a movie about, you know, you know how they got those girls? A platypus. Uh, uh, those girls, coffee, you know, skinky places. You know, you build bulgies right across the street. A man where women can see men <laughs> stealing coffee. You know, <laughs> battling against the women across the street. That I think bulgies yeah. would be a good movie. Well, we make a joke about it. We're actually taking the piss out of it because Eric and I did a show once. And this is a true story. Uh, we did it on uh, Eric. What's his name? Something Steen. He went. To, he went to uh, court because he was sexually harassing all these women in Hollywood. What's his name? Uh, Epstein. Not Epstein. But the other Steen. Uh, the the director. The director. Weinstein. 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 Oh, so uh, Weinstein. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we did it. The summer movie. That. The, yes. Uh, Weinstein and his brother. The burning. The burning. The burn. They started off with a small amount of money, and they made a horror movie, and it was. Like one of the first actual, I'm going to use the word, we softened it. We have a, a TNA movie, which is up women that are exposed and a lot of that. <laughs> he started that whole trend. And then from there, he kept producing and adding money to all these horror movies. And so all these young actors, young up and coming actors we see now that are big time number one actors would start off with Weinstein. He'd put them in a slasher movie. Uh, young teenage, whatever, and they're half undressed, and then next thing you know, they're in another good movie. So he was like making, he was producing these slasher movies, the Weinstein Company, to start off all these young and up and coming first time actors. And literally, they're always nude. Like well, technically, uh, 
That's what Blumhouse does now. Yeah. Blumhouse makes these lower budget horror movies, so they don't need to make these blockbuster money. You know, they they make yeah. like, like like when he redid Halloween, it only costed nine million. So when he made a hundred million, you know, it made a lot of money. You know, like the one movie they call it a bomb for him because he only made thirty million. But they're like, how is it a bomb when he only made he only paid five million to make? God I what damn. movie it was. But like you make a low budget, but if you make it good, you don't need to make a hundred million, two hundred million, three hundred oh. million. Man, Next, what's a couple movies that uh, inspires and influences your movies? Oh God, uh, <clears throat> uh, the French Connection, Mud, uh, Goodfellas, The Exorcist, uh, the, Exorcist. the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pulp Fiction. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, yes. just a little bit. I just like gritty movies, man. You know what I mean? Just raw gritty are you, movies. Are you a big fan of uh, Kurosawa? I'm a I'm a huge Kurosawa guy. You ever heard of Kurosawa? No, He's jog famous, my brain. Jog my brain. Yeah, well, famous Japanese director. He was the one who actually started. He there was a movie called The Seventh Samurai, and it was the inspiration for okay, Hollywood yeah, to copy. Yeah, they were. And they made the was it the, they made the Magnificent Seven, you know the in in yeah. America. So Kurosawa's movies also had one as like the Good, Bad, and the Ugly, or no, uh, for a few dollars more, he kind of did all these Japanese samurai movies that America was copying. They were just ripping them off out of Italy. They were ripping the, a lot of these spaghetti westerns were stealing directly from Kurosawa in Japan. Yeah, if you want to see anything, look up Kurosawa, go through all his movies, man. You'll be to, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you'd be blown away. <laughs> He's one of the, my biggest favorite directors ever. Yeah. <laughs> Super inspirational. And Mitch, you've acted in a few movies too. That uh, one is on YouTube. It's about a diving team. Uh, but just tell us about some of the times you've acted uh, and, and not had to direct yourself, you know? Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I haven't had a whole lot of acting roles. Like I say, that was kind of real that, in the past four years. Uh, but yeah, you're talking about, I actually have a poster for it up here, Anchor. Um, it's directed by a, 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 a woman named Paige Irene Bruns. Uh, and I was in another film that she did. She went to the Ringling uh, College of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida. So uh, I did two student films with her there, Anchor and Void. And then... Um, uh, I've, I've worked with, with some of the FSU students in Tallahassee. Um, some of those have been like outside of the FSU program. I don't think I've actually done any officially with the, the school. I, I did, I did one, one time and, uh, I don't think it ever got finished, man. That was, that okay. was a rough one. Uh, but I think they were trying to get into the program. They weren't already in the program. God, they weren't already in the program. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I've got a couple of horror stories, but I won't. I'm not going to get into those, man. I'm just trying to keep the blood pressure down. <laughs> did you go to college for? Did you go to college for directing at all, or are you just kind of an independent guy on your own doing your own thing? No, man. I did air conditioning. I still do air conditioning here and there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was an air conditioning guy, man. And and uh, anyways, I just got back into doing film. And yeah, I'm telling you, hey, YouTube. People don't realize we live in such a great age, man, where you can learn anything on YouTube. So, like, the technical side of everything, know. you know, just watch YouTube, watch films, try to make a film, and then apply the knowledge and see, like you said earlier, see where you miss, see where you hit, and then make yeah. something better every time. <laughs> That's true. One of the best advice I ever heard on a channel on YouTube when they said, how do you start? Pick up your phone. Go live, click, boom. That's how you start. Hit record. And just do it. And you'll learn from there. Yeah. Like, okay. You just got to do it. You just got to – don't wait to tomorrow. Don't wait to next year. Just start. Yeah. yeah. That's the way – like, when you, it's the same thing with life. You know, when you commit your first murder, you got to <laughs> – you do it once. And then you're a little nervous <laughs> afterwards. You don't feel that good about what you did. But as, as time goes forward, you get better at it. <laughs> Same thing with directing. Whatever. Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say yeah to that, man. Exactly. <laughs> it's a safe thing to say at this moment. 
<laughs> I'm playing, by the way, everybody. I'm just playing. <laughs> well, we hope you are. No okay. animals are <laughs> no animals harmed or people during this, this show, guys. Nobody's hurt. <laughs> You, you do a comedy? You ever do a comedy? You ever do anything like a? You ever consider doing a comedy? A comedy? Yeah. Uh, President's Day mattress sale was our attempt at a comedy. Okay. Uh, okay. And we're ever. You know, we went really dark with Daryl. Like, so every move, I think every film we're trying to get uh, more comedic again. I, I hope our next one's a little more comedic. Because um, yeah, man. I, yeah, I, I'm all about comedy, but um, yeah. You know, you got to find that gray area. You don't want to be too too funny. You still want to tell a good story, you know. But yeah, yeah. Like well, the- comedy is really hard. I oh, mean, they're hard. You got know, to you got to <laughs> nail it with the jokes. You got to you know, it's not as easy as people think it is. There's a lot of these actors win these Oscars, and I think some of these o- Oscars should go to these comedy actors because yeah, it's harder I do too. to do than sure. fake crying and stuff. Yeah. I mean, my- my favorite actors yeah. are all com- comics, comics, all comedians. <laughs> I can't stand no drama guy. I, I mean, maybe there's that cummer back guy, like but that's about it. <laughs> sorry, go, like go 20 years ago, no, nothing was off limits with comedy either. Now you got to like be careful, like oh, what man. you what you joke about. You know what I mean? Um, so it's like it's oh. it's it's a lot tighter on what you can say. So I feel like the comedy is more specific. So it, what's funny to these guys might be funny to these now. So. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I'm not a conspiracy overhead, but I've noticed there's a wave to suppress comedy. And I was literally devastated not too long ago because my two favorite comedians were making a fucking movie. It was uh, Bill Murray and, and Seth Rogen. I'm like, forget it, man. Hands down in a movie, this is going to be a major hit. These guys are the best. They're hilarious. Stoner guys having a good time. Uh, they didn't make the movie. Uh, appara- apparently, uh, one of them was being too rude. Uh, Bill Murray said something out of place to a female. Something happened, and they had to stop production. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, that's, that's the right. humor. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. <laughs> ah. But that is a good point. It, so it, that, that's, you got to worry about that now when you direct the movie and trying to make yeah. sure that you don't offend because everybody's offended nowadays. There's no matter what you're gonna offend a group. It, it, it's how do you how do you do your best to not offend some of the groups? You are gonna offend some groups. Yeah, yeah, and that's it's like I guess just I don't know how how pissed do they get? I guess is really what it boils down to because <laughs> like like there's no way to avoid hurting everybody's feelings. You know what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, yeah, you gotta like, you gotta pick and choose. You know, I'm gonna insult these people. It's just, it is what it is. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have that dog shit on that man's face. It's gonna be funny, and it's gonna offend a lot of people. I know it. (laughs) (laughs) Has anybody been nasty to you uh, about Derelict because you play like such a dirty character? Have people like judged you for that? Uh, I know most of it has kind of been uplifting, but have some people kind of like, I don't know, spit on you because they like treat you like you're Adam? No, man, everybody's been pretty – I think everybody got the message in the film. I, th- I think everybody was really like uh, – I, I don't want to – some people were inspired. But, no, I've never got any, like, negative – negative. I, I have got negative feedback on my acting from film fe- – like, there was a fil- uh, film festival that they, they would send you your, your score sheet. And oh, uh, wow. one, of the, one of the judges gave us, like, an 8 out of 10. You know, they were raving on The other one's, like, 7 out of 10. The other guy gave us like a three. He's like shitting on it. He's like, was not convinced by the actor's performance. Oh. <laughs> uh, but other than that, no, nothing about the character itself. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Uh, dude, you're playing the part too real. You got, you're yeah. To be an actor, you got to pretend that it's not real and you got to fake it a little bit more. Then you'll get your tens. Yeah, I want to make a really bad movie just yep. to go to that place, submit it in there, and wait for that piece of shit to say something bad plan it from the beginning <laughs> made a I'll horrible movie <laughs> <laughs> eric we're gonna make a horrible movie just so i can confront this guy so he can sing me that song so bob the new edwood <laughs> eric take that movie that we made and submit it in there <laughs> what is this a joke yes. I'll send you- <laughs> <laughs> was not impressed by your performance <laughs> 
Was that an erection you had laying there? Yes, it was. And I did hire a fluffer. So it was done all natural. Actually, Bob, she just submit that. See what she just submitted just to, just, to have them, just to have them throw it down and say, what the hell? This is ridiculous. <laughs> I, honestly, that movie is really silly, and you made it with a green screen. But if you guys cleaned it up a little bit uh, and, you know, put a little bit of, you know, really true professionalism, dude, there is cinemas out there and studios like SRS Cinema. They sell, you know, House Shark. It's a guy in a uh, Sark suit, you know, hunting down people in a house. Like, literally, it's not much better than that. So if you guys just, like, fine-tune stuff, there is studios out there that will buy it. And it's, it's crazy. There's levels to it, man. I mean, People eat that shit up so bad it's good, you know? That's so you're cool saying there is a chance. There is, there is a chance. chance. <laughs> There's no chance. With the uh, cartoon and, you know, then then your guys' is, uh, boner movie, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, ha I have a sequel in here in my head for that movie. Oh, wow. Wow. Can we include the uh, Duckbill um, monster? Platypus? Remember, I, I died in that movie, but you lived. Oh, yeah, I know. But the no, next what, one, I want to include a platypus now. <laughs> I know. I want an otter man hunter in the show, and I want an actual platypus that hunts people in the forest. Can we add that to the show, Eric? Sure. Sure. Actually, you know, you know, it's a good question sometimes. You know, is it better to do a sequel or do oh yeah do one from scratch again and just make it a little better or sharper i mean there's a lot of directions because have you thought about doing sequels to any of your short stories or you want oh, yeah. to wait you be able to change one to a full length before you even think about trying to do yeah. a sequel to one of them yeah well like lincoln county lincoln county was supposed to have uh sequels that's like, right uh, said like that, as yeah. a tv series so that Derelict was actually uh, that story is kind of the small part of a feature film that I had written. And uh, we kind of just took that and ran it. It got changed from what the original vision was stylistically and kind of became its own thing. But yeah, I would love to make that film with the Adam character uh, as a whole. But so far as a sequel, wow. uh, no, but y you know, you, you say that and it's weird. You see, you see these people take a liking to your film like with lincoln county we've kind of gotten like a following like people hey what's up lincoln county like kind of like what we're <laughs> known for and it's almost like do we take what's already established there and that small fan base and kind of build on that or like you said just kind of do something totally different it's yeah. it's it's i mean i've thought about it for sure because it's the title. Because when I think of Lincoln County, I'm thinking of a cowboy kind of a movie in a way, you know. So, so the <laughs> yeah. title is perfect for for a movie because your imagination can go anywhere with it. Well, didn't Matthew like, McConaughey make a movie like that? Movie, so you could do whatever you want with it in a sequel type thing with that, did or Lee... expand it. Man, Matthew McConaughey did he yeah. make a movie called Lincoln County? Yeah, yeah, Lincoln yeah. Lawyer. Lincoln Lawyer. Yeah, Lincoln Lawyer. Yeah. Uh, party at the Moon Tower. Party at the Moon Tower. <laughs> party at the Moon Tower. <laughs> have, you, <laughs> have you actually sent the stuff that you've done already? Has it opened any doors where you actually met somebody? Oh, who's, yeah. Who's maybe is real known out there. You got to meet like a. a but not that you're anything bad, dude. <laughs> not that you're less than, but no. have you met an actor? <laughs> Nah, <laughs> we've been to all these film festivals. Actually, uh, oh gosh, John Amos from uh, Good Times, the TV show. He was at the Orlando Film Festival when we went. But we left like two days before he showed up, so we didn't get to see him. <laughs> but no, the guy that directed Blades, oh, Thomas gosh. Rondinella, that's, that's, that's about it, man. Yeah, we met him at Orlando. That's cool. That's cool. I, you mean anybody you want to work actually, with? Yeah, oh, yeah, a bunch of people, man, a bunch of people. And there's people we still keep in contact with. It's just kind of getting the stars to align. And another weird thing is in these film festivals, you kind of meet a lot of people that are writer-directors. And I myself am a writer-director. And it's like we're kind of doing the same thing. It's hard to, to collaborate. But that's why I always I like, hey, I also add, you know, like if you need an actor. Um, but yeah, man, there, there's, I've met a lot of talented people that really haven't gotten to the level of where everybody knows them yet, but 
I think a lot of them will eventually, for sure. Now, Very have cool. you directed something that you haven't written? Oh, uh, no, hard. I haven't. No, no. That'd be hard. Yeah, that would be that weird, I think. Be... You know, and I, and I know a lot of I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm saying I know there's directors who, who only direct stuff they write, or there's a lot of directors who direct yeah. other people's stories. I always wonder. You know, is it better to have your own written because you feel like you got more control because you wrote it and then you can make all the changes you want? I'm always curious, like when you take yeah. somebody else's story and you're directing it and you want to make changes, I wonder, like, is that a pain in the ass? Do you got to go to these writers and say, hey, I'm going to change this, change that? I'm always yeah. wondering, like, like, what's the thought process when <laughs> doing somebody else's story, yeah, not I, your own? I, I, feel like a lot of feelings would get hurt easily because like if somebody did write something you're like well i like it but i want to change this part and they're like well that part means something to me you know i don't want you to change it it's like okay do you keep it and compromise your vision or do you change it and just say to hell with their feelings you know wow <laughs> yeah that'd be rough man you know those directors are just i'm doing it for a living i i direct for a living what do you have give me your script try to bring it to yeah. life you're, you're holding somebody's baby you know man it's like think... somebody's baby I think you have to, not only you have to, but a director is the quarterback of the team. And if he feels that something's going to work better, you, I feel like you should, you know, trust him. You know? Yeah. I mean, everybody starts to develop a reputation, but there's a reason why somebody's directing a movie. You're, you're trusting him to take a material and do something with it. Now, of course, like you said, it's easier when you read it yourself, but I'm sure, have you, like, have you ever written a story for your story and then, by the end of the movie, you technically rewrote the whole thing while you did it. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> I can see that. Happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we yeah we've had some start as one thing and kind of end up as another, or start and then and then you get a side character and you're like, oh, this guy's more interesting than the main character. So then you kind of mm -hmm. re rework everything from this guy's point of view or something. Yeah, I can see that. I'd like to be a director actor. Uh, and then, and then, just have women come on, and for no other reason but to like have us uh, uh, bed scenes with the gals. Are you really a director? Yes. Is it really a movie? Now get in the bed. <laughs> I'm the actor in this scene. Oh no, no, that reminds me of the movie The Room. That's exactly what it was like in the movie. Yeah, the movie. no, that's basically yeah. what he did. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that. Never mind. That's been done. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> But you hear that story all the time on TV that they bring in a guest actor and he's got so much more love and they take the guest actor, he becomes part of the team. When the main actors, I mean, I know this is cheesy, people, I know, but technically in the 90s, the 90210, that, that, that cool kid, the uh, forgot. Um, Booker? Who? No, well, I'm thinking the wrong movie. No, wrong the, 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 I don't want to, uh, the guy with the, the, the lamb chops? Yeah. Yeah, he was just a guest appearance, and then people loved him so much, they rolled him in as one of the main characters. Because you don't know, you know the chemistry. And you see the chemistry, like, wow, this person is really good. Or yeah, he had the cyberns. We had the cyberns. Yeah, cyber. yeah. I forgot the guy's name. What's, uh, what's Luke Wilson or Luke, uh, not Luke Wilson, something like that. Well, I, I know I heard a story was he was like a, he was like a construction worker guy, and he was standing at an ATM looking all dirty, and some. You know, Luke homoerotic. Perry, Luke freaking. Perry. Luke Perry, yeah. And some like uh, producers, like, hey, you know, you look nice. You know, the way put him on the show. Oh, no, you're <laughs> talking about the guy when they did uh, the Angel about the band. And, and the, the, the lead singer of the band, they, this guy saw him at an ATM pulling out money. Oh, he, was, he looked okay. good in his jeans. Yeah. Seriously, true story. Uh, and then he went, the agent went to hire him, say, you look good in the jeans, and put him in a TV show. That's what it and is. He was yeah. a guest appearance on 90210. Okay, okay, that uh, guy. Okay. That song Angel, that famous. God. <sighs> yeah, you know, well, anybody that works in Hollywood, Eric, we Eric and I are from California. We know about we know about Hollywood it's right up the road from where we I live. And so you get a lot of people from all over the country. They all come through, they stop in this town first, and they go in there to look for jobs to get their way into Hollywood. And their goal is to like they get a waiter's job, they get horrible jobs. Horrible, horrible jobs, and they're all wanting to be actors. Like I feel bad for. Them. And then, unfortunately, I make the joke all the time, but half of those gals, guys, get detoured over to the to the valley, 
other part of the valley where they're where they're making unfavorable movies. So <laughs> they'll pull their they'll pull them right off the bus. They get off the bus, ma'am. Come with me. You want to make movies? <laughs> so long story short, Mitch, would you ever film a porno? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the dark side. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Quick, Connor was the lead actor. Yes, I'm in. Mean, we can we can dress me up. We could uh, make it some kind of like alien porno, X rated, R rated, yes, futuristic. Yeah. I'm down for it. You're like, you know, I was thinking about Bob's call. How do you talk to an angel? And how do you the, talk to an the angel? singer actor was found at an ATM machine. He's pulling. Okay, out the so money. that's the guy at the ATM machine. Yeah, all these stories about these actors, how they're discovered, is fucking hilarious. You know. I, I, what I do, you know, as like a C grade actor, I just like hunt down all these directors, like Mitch and Jack, and I got all these scripts. I, I, I want to be in those, you know, not arguments or debates that hopefully Mitch has some creative, you know, insight, and it's different than my script, and then we could figure it out. Me and uh, Jack, you know, had some good discussions yesterday when we were talking about just what do we got to do to make films, you know, and I will compromise for that, you know, and let's just get it done. That's what I'm about, that movie magic. Yes. Yeah, I'll, I, go ahead, Eric. No, actually, so Mitchell, all the people you've talked to now, because there's so many streaming services now and all that, oh, God. do you feel there's more... Maybe now there's more opportunities for more people to get gigs because there's a lot more platforms. Lots and everybody's of them. competing, and they're all looking for the show. You think it has opened up for more people to get chances to do? I mean, Netflix fucking hires anybody. Oh, wow. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's undeniable that there's more opportunity. Uh I think it's kind of geared more towards TV series now, which I personally can't stand. You know, I'd rather just watch a good film for two hours and then be done with it instead of having to watch it on the couch for a week, never get up, never do anything <laughs> else, you know. But, um, but, but no, like if you just want to be in the film industry, work in film or act, yeah, it's definitely open the avenue, I think, you know. Uh, there's so, I mean, my God, everybody's got their own streaming platform yes. now. and original series yes. so yeah i think it's undeniable that it's uh opened up there's even streaming services i've never heard of like what yeah what? I mean, this is what? i've never heard of like what are you from where you can watch this on what <laughs> what's this lithuanian what to what channel like what is this channel and then everybody's signing up for all these dirty day <laughs> free trials and you forget oh, about like it and then you get these bills <laughs> yeah eric you you you, you got a channel that uh, you got a channel not too long ago. You just signed up for it. it was like all. It's all. It's like all. Was it paranormal? Cha all paranormal shows or something like that. Eric, didn't you get a channel like that? Well, it's all I reality mean, paranormal shows and well, horror I mean, movies. I mean, Discovery Plus has categories. They have okay. a whole paranormal section. There's a couple of um, horror channels called Shutter. Is all horror yeah. Shutter, movies. yeah. Shutter. Shutter is all horror. Yeah. Stuff. They have true, their own. Man. They have their own like. And and thing is, with all these streaming services, they all have their own stuff too now. So everybody, because now, because you got to remember, you know, like like see, like Netflix. Anybody, if anybody cares, Netflix is in real real trouble. Why? And one of the reasons they're in real trouble because a lot of the most popular shows on Netflix are not their content. Even, oh. even though they got Stranger Things and stuff, most of their favorite stuff was like The Office, Friends. Which is going back to their streaming uh, show. Oh, series. I so, see, I see, so, I see. And and the original content that Netflix does does not outbeat the content that's already been out there. It's weird. Oh, it's, wow. So they're oh. actually in a world of hurt. That's why. That's why their stocks has dropped. Not just because they lost some subscribers. Is they're losing every year. They lose more and more of the content that they license from other. <laughs> Because everybody's got a streaming service. So yeah. everybody wants their stuff back. Like Disney's buying up everybody. Disney's buying everybody's shit. <laughs> All the hero movies, anything that's wow. weird, Disney's buying it now. That sucks. So I, I agree with Mitchell about like like like, like TV shows. Because like, like the biggest problem I have with Disney is I'm fucking tired of, hey, we got this new series, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. <laughs> only eight. Or, or Obi-Wan Kenobi, hey, you got six episodes. 
But guess what? They're 30, 40 minutes. Yeah, it really? It's like, yeah. you know, it's like, give me a fucking story. <laughs> I don't want to watch stuff in 30 minutes. Yeah, it's getting bad. You know? so I can't wait until, until, you know, Mitchell, you know, he gets to get his hands dirty on a full length movie. I'm excited movie. to see what you could do because I see what you do with these short films, but I want to see a full one that give you full range to do what you want. Yes. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one at that cinema for you, man. Complete control. <laughs> yes. <laughs> here's a camera. Yeah, here's a happen. crew. <laughs> and I think going back to the TV series thing, man, if you look like his, historically, man, like TV shows will have their kind of like rise and demise. I think we're going to see the pendulum swing here in the next few years, man. I think movies are, and films are going to get their, uh, I, I think they're going to make a comeback. I hope. I think so. Actually, they've been making comebacks as we spoke. I mean, fuck, if you would have told me a year ago, oh, Eric, Top Gun 2 is going to make over a billion dollars. I love Top Gun. I'm oh like, a billion dollars? No way. A sequel from wow. 30 years ago, it wow. made over a billion dollars. Top Gun so, Part 2? Top Gun 2 made over a billion dollars. So Tom people Cruise, are, are, are dying to get back into the theaters to see the big movies and stuff. Even though you had all these streaming services, fucking Thor made over $120 million because people wow. want to get in the cinema and see on the big screen with other people because there's an energy that you get. Oh, when I you love going to a theaters. drive in or a cinema that you I like drive ins from home. You know, I want to bring back a drive in one day. I told I'm good to tell my but I'm going to buy one day if I have money. I'm gonna buy acres of land and put a goddamn drive in. in. Like that's obsolete. No, it's not. Yes. <laughs> well, there's still drive ins out there, but there's a there's a fundamental fun of going to a drive in with other people and enjoying something, popcorn, then then just staying home on your couch because then your butt hurts, you got to get up, go to the bathroom. There's something about going to a cinema and seeing an hour and a half, two hour movie, you know? And yeah, and I always go in the mind frame is, is nobody wants to make a bad movie. So you go in that mind frame to have a good time. And even though a movie sucks, I always say this, well, this movie sucks to make this movie better. Okay. Eat some popcorn, butter. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, you need a bad movie to make other movies look better. You have to. Yeah. I'd like to get a group of friends all together, and we all have movie night, and everyone has to everyone has to be in pajamas. It's like, okay, dude, we're gonna go to the movie. You're gonna do the pajama thing tonight. You gonna come? Yeah. Everyone shows up in like onesies and stupid pajamas, blankets and pillows. Just a whole group of people. <laughs> That'd be cool. Take over a movie theater. <laughs> And Mitch, Watch. you uh, rented out a movie theater for Derelict. How'd that go? Oh, wow. Ooh. Oh, dude. Okay, so this was right after everything kind of started getting back to somewhat normal after the pandemic. And uh, the movie theater in our, uh, or not far from our hometown, it just opened back up. So we called them. There's no new movies being played. So they're like, yeah, we'll rent you an auditorium for like an oh. hour or whatever. And we, we premiered Derelict before we submitted to any festivals or anything for our family and friends and, and, and you know, whoever from the hometown. And, man, like, I want to say 75 people probably showed up, which for that wow. small theater, man, it was, like, almost packed out. And that was that was wow. really cool. And, and, and But, uh, like you were saying, it, everybody was just looking for an excuse to get out of the house and, and go watch something together. Oh God, that'd be fucking there's fun. An, there's an energy there that you don't get from home when you're with people because you're all there to have a good time. You all want to see something great. Yeah, yeah, man, like the Rocky Horror Picture Show at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> that, well, uh, that one year we went and saw oh, Friday the Thirteenth <laughs> at just midnight and part six, and everybody was out with the. Ready, you the know, the masks on, the fucking machetes, yeah, machetes, all I the mean, dressed up, energy and excitement. Oh my god, you don't get that at a home. You just don't. Friday Thirteenth of Thon, man, steady. Move. I love it when they do those things where all they do multiple movies back to back, and you just sit there for a couple of hours. Oh my god, <laughs> <sighs> big a thon, like a, whatever a thon, like the Friday Thirteenth of Thon, all the way through, man. I like to see a cheesy movie a thon one day. Huh. No, but no, we want to see a, a Mitchell Cole a thon. Mitchell Cole a thon. Oh, his movies. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. It's only like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it. We'll get it. I and predict then, you'll have a full length of film by 2000. Uh, well, 2023 is coming up, huh? By by the end of 2023, you're gonna be have one done, or yeah. you're in the middle of of making it. Big production, man. Big production cut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, yes. you're gonna get a twenty dollar budget. Yes. You're gonna have Brad Pitt on the fucking <laughs> Brad Pitt a phone call away. He's like, I'll do it. <laughs> All these famous actors will be in there. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll go into Michael Cole's uh, channel show. Actually, Bob, a lot of those big actors they do go to lower films on purpose because they want to win an Oscar. So that's true. Do major pay cuts trying to get that role that's gonna make them into something. So you know, you never know. One day he might have Brad Pitt in his movie. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, every uh, washed-up actor has oh to do God. a movie with a little kid. They have to do a movie with a kid. I have to travel around with a kid in the whole movie. <laughs> that's what that's a that's an actor's comeback. Eric, me and Eric used to joke about it. Uh, what was it? Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. What's next? Oh, kindergarten cop. Of course, kindergarten cop. He's always gonna have the, the kid. <laughs> Three minutes a baby. Of course, these high-end actors have to have the baby role with the, all these. And then uh, even Logan. Now he's got a daughter. You're like, okay. Every at Tom Hanks was it something America? Whatever he, he found that bl uh, little blonde girl wandering around, he, he's traveling with her. Like, what's that up with real, that? That was real life when uh, Tom Hanks bought that 14 year old girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I would like to uh, 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 have McConaughey in one of my movies because I, I could, I could see oh, God. having a beer with McConaughey yeah. at a restaurant with him in Texas doing the, the, the steaks and all that. I bet he's a fun guy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe give him one of his cars or something from his commercial. I get older, they stay the same age. Eric, have you seen Mud uh, by Jeff Nichols? That's a big movie and Mitch's, yeah. you know, inspiration. That yeah. was, uh, man, that's a long time ago. I got to rewatch that. I can't, I, I, I remember the movie, but I don't remember it too well. But I remember McConaughey's in Mud. Yeah, that yeah. director, Jeff Nichols, is number one on Mitch's list. And, you know, he made uh, Midnight Special. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And then he made Take Shelter with Michael Shannon. Uh, he's definitely got that gritty style. And uh, if Mitch Mitch matches it, man, I love it. That'd be cool. <laughs> well, the greatest movie Matthew McConaughey ever made was Surfer Dude to me. It was independent. It was an independent film. I was like, this is the best film he's ever made. The rest of them, I'm, I'm okay with them. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> He just kind of talking about beach bums? If if you had a choice oh, of picking somebody, dude. would there would there be somebody you would love to work with? Oh, so uh, well, Jeff Nichols has already taken him, but Michael Shannon, man, that's like I think he's the best actor working in film right now, man. Michael Shannon, he's just incredible in everything he does. Um, Bob Odenkirk, uh, and J Jason Lee for My Name Is Earl. Oh, yes. Yes, Jason Lee. Yeah, he used to be a skater. And then he became an actor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you about Michael Shannon. When I heard Michael Shannon was playing that character uh, uh, in uh, Man of Steel. Zor. At Zor. And when I watched Man of Steel, he fucking stole the movie. I've never saw yeah. Zor so good in my, my Michael Shannon, I mean, he played Zor Maniac, psycho, smart, intelligent. Do I mean, he, I know it's a comic book movie, but I was blown away what he did with that character. That mad, that, that insanity, that, it's like, wow. And Eric loves to get blown, man, so he's <laughs> blown away. Yes. <laughs> and then he was in that uh, TV series um, on HBO, uh, uh, Boardwalk. And where he plays like that cop who whips hurts himself and whatever. It's like that guy can act. People don't give Mike Shannon enough credit. He is yeah. one of the best actors out there, hands down. No, it's it's uh Mishimi is the best actor out there. Mishimi. 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 Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, no, he's good. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> to me, he's an underrated uh, actor with like bad teeth that you know. And balding, so he's like, I love ugly actors. 
I don't like I don't like any. If I see a movie, I'm not joking. I put on a movie. It's an action adventure. I wow. see some dude walk out, look like he just come out of a freaking a hairstyle and he's all like, what? What? I ain't watching this. Well, I'll I tell you see- what. What's if Mitchell that? wants a golden hit movie, Bob and Connor could be the new Cheech and Chong. You yes. don't have to call them Cheech and Chong. <laughs> but they're both doing the movie together. Holy shit. That is the new version yes. of Cheech and Chong if I've ever seen it. You would have the biggest comedy of the year. But we're two white guys, so that won't, it won't, it's not, it, nobody will buy it. it you, Netflix you, will you be know, like, no, they'll add a third character, kind of like Ghostbusters. There's added- two Caucasian stoners, we can't have this. This is, uh, we need a, there will mix in there. <laughs> we'll have a trans imaginary friend, bro. Yeah, you, <laughs> and their transsexual friend, <laughs> you know, you gotta have a mix in there somewhere. You can do that, like. You mix Bob's idea of smoking a band of those two going from Florida to California or something road trip. One Dude, <laughs> we're hunting for Otter Man from Lincoln County to Humboldt. <laughs> we're going to the weed capital where it is legal. <laughs> we're also hunting for Platypus Man, and uh, no one's talked about him yet. And so, like the Platypus Man t shirt, there's no platypus. Shut up. There is. I just want some and royal Sonny credit did, on the um, writing for that. For that idea. And Sony confirmed that uh, males are poisonous. So I wasn't too far So off really? That. That's for real? Oh, my God. I didn't know that. I actually didn't know that. How convenient is that? They could kill you. <laughs> now, how do they secrete venom? Is it through the teeth or what? I, how? Eric, look that up. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell does a platypus kill people? I gotta find that out. I gotta find that out. I'll try to find out in the field here soon. Uh, you know, put my arm out there. Somebody's writing this down. We're gonna be. It's gonna be a platypus movie out here pretty soon, man. Yeah. Like, hey, I that's can't ours. Remember what you said? What are so? What are, are you working on something as we speak right now, or are you just doing a writing process right now, getting another story ready? We we have like three scripts that are to a point where we could probably start production, but it's it's more or less right now trying to figure out what resources we have and what resources we can get and see which film best fits where we're at right now. And also kind of all the while thinking about where we want to go with it. Like, like I said, we want to use it as a proof of concept to get funding for a feature film. So we're, we want to try to match what we're doing with what we want to do. Yeah. You can use yeah. my backyard. You can use my backyard. We got a cool little school <laughs> up there that there, there's like no no kids go to the school at all. They're like all online, but there's an actual <laughs> empty school. Hey, we got we got we got spots. We got the famous uh, UFO yeah. thing from 1940. Yeah, that's fucking out famous here. There. You know. Yeah, I mean, pretty soon. I'm, I mean, I'm just really interested in the school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like a big school with no kids because it's all they. It's an online kind of a school. I don't know. It's weird. You might see a few teachers, but I walk around with my dog through the whole school. They don't care that I'm there. Wow! You know, cameras and stuff. Dude. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll all have a stimulus check or something. We'll wait for another big disease to go around. We'll get a stimulus check, and then we'll all put it together and make a movie. <laughs> how do you make a movie? Dude, how do you make how do you make this movie? A, a stimulus check. <laughs> <laughs> People say how, how you fl- I, I flew back and forth from England, you know, back and forth, visit Eric, go back and forth. How you I have no money, I'm broke. How are you flying? A oh, stimulus check, man. <laughs> I buy two way tickets for the stimulus check. You just go all over the place. I met people on the planes. What are you doing here? They're they're bouncing all over. Got a, oh, got a stimulus check. About a ticket. <laughs> Nobody's flying on planes, right? This is during the COVID thing. Nobody's flying. All all the airports are having cheap fucking cheap tickets everywhere, and everyone with stimulus checks were like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna cash it in and go to travel." <laughs> Why not? Why not? So we're gonna use that stimulus check. We're gonna make a movie. You guys saw Bowfinger, right? Where he saves up a dollar each week, and then he has like two thousand dollars, and he says, "You know, it's like, doesn't movies take like millions of dollars to make?" 
No, two thousand dollars cash. That's all it takes. And he slams it down on the table. Uh, 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 After budgeting and all that shit, you know, two thousand dollars. <laughs> Boom. Uh, so I love it. And I'm big on you know twenty bucks. And we need to be making movies. You know, we we made Blood Cat with less. He made Deer with two hundred. Oh my gosh, man. I I just think you know, sky's the limit. Take risks. Be experimental. If you don't like the cut, burn it. Save it for the BTS behind the scenes, you know. We'll get monetized yeah. through YouTube through that. But I, I, I just love it, man. And I just love that I can uh, find filmmakers like Mitch, like Jack, even like the dude Bateman that wants to make the Fallout film. Like, I just love creators and just people that think outside the box. And we live in such a bland area that's like, we got to create the magic, you know. It's yeah. like the, like the internet. It's, it's nothing without the personality and, like, what we bring with this show, man. We bring a flavor. And I just want to share this. Yeah, that's why I do a channel too. I'm bored. I, there is nothing to watch. So fuck it. I'll just make my own. <laughs> you just make your own channel. <laughs> just, um, live tonight. <laughs> but you hear that story all the time. When you force a budget and they only have a certain amount to work with, and they got to think outside the box to do wow. a certain kind of a scene, and yeah. they always come out the best when they think outside the box. You don't try to cover everything up. With the CGI, with the computer, you know, you got to learn how to do some practical stuff. Yeah. Some of the best magic comes from when you have nothing to finish a movie with. You just find pennies. You just get the people, you know, how about for free? Your best magic comes from that. Yeah, like Ed Wood. Ed Wood was famous for that. Ed, remember Ed, you guys remember the director Ed Wood? You guys don't know? Ed Wood the, is the guy who made Plan 9 yeah. from Outer Plan Space. Plan 9 from Outer Space, yeah. Another one. He had like a, a like a zero budget, nothing. He had cheesy sci-fi, would, old wrestle used up wrestlers as actors. He would take the church's uh, money by putting their daughter in the movie on purpose so they could get some money for the he movie. Get the money for the church. Hey, he had no budget, works, right? Whatever you need to do to get that movie done, you know. Yeah, you guys gotta see that movie. Uh, uh, I'm not a fan, but uh, Johnny Depp. You guys might be a big fan. Johnny Depp made a movie called Ed Wood. And it's about the famous yeah, director in Hollywood that had no money. Nobody liked him. He's an idiot. He was, he secretly, he was secretly a cross dresser on his own time. He's like this weird guy who makes a movie on a budget, like nothing. Like he's making every, he's stealing props from other fucking productions yeah. and stealing. And one and shot's it. good enough. <laughs> one shot's good. One shot. We got it. We got it. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the machine's broken? Who cares? Make the R's move yourself. <laughs> <laughs> There's no mechanics in this, uh, like that big old huge octopus. There's no mechanics in it. It's just like a big old pillow. You're going to have to take it and move it on yourself as it's attacking you and make it look like it's really attacking you. But you're the mechanics. Like, oh, my God. This is bad. <laughs> Great movie production. I'm going to make one. Eric, we're going to make a movie. Let's okay. make a movie. Yes, yes. Uh, it's going to be about a, uh, the, a gorilla cork farmers. People don't know, but back in the time uh, in Portugal, they had cork, cork trees that made corks for all the wine. This is a real life thing. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they had these synthetic cork factories popping up everywhere. So all these small family guys got together. They're like, they're, they're, their whole life is, is cork from the cork trees. And they're losing business. So nobody's using their cork for wine anymore. So in real life, a bunch of these guys got together and became cork cork gorillas cork cork gorillas they were blowing up synthetic cork factories i can only imagine making a movie a bunch of like not hardcore huge like badass like gorillas but these are just cork farmers <laughs> <That's> <laughs> figuring cool. out how to blow up buildings and shit like cork factories are blowing up cork factories that could work. shutting down productions like like there were like these these guys were getting they're flattening the tires of of, of synthetic cork trucks. <laughs> you don't need doing all these crazy shit. These are regular just regular Portuguese farmer kids. Well, it's kind of like Mitchell's movies where he makes movies where they, you do things when you're desperate. These yeah people yeah like that are yeah. taken away. So they're taking yeah. it back in a desperate way. So there's a lot of relations. So yeah, so I can see Mitchell equipment. making that movie. Go to that. Portugal. That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> you know, you know, they, their whole familyhood is about to be gone, lost to these corporations making shit, plastic, fake stuff. They got to get it back. Yeah, that imagine like a movie, man. Yeah, imagine you get fired from a. Well, you make those little green soldier guys, and then like you got fired from it. You're angry, so you want to go blow up the building. <laughs> we got copyright this. Start stuff your now. own. Start your own little uh, factory with little uh, with little army men. 
like a little competition. That'd be kind of cool. Like something like that would be cool. Cheesy. If that makes actually, sense. Actually, Mitchell, when you get finished, even with the short film, do, is there like a copyright thing? You got to fill out forms. So oh, yeah, have to get, like steal it from you, even though it's 20 minutes, 40 minutes. Is there like a copyright it's, process it's, you got to do? Or are you just like, fuck it. They want to steal it, use it. They can. I'm, I'm sure you can fill out something, but it's kind of like with a short film that they could change whatever, you know, in the premise and make it their own, you know? So it, even if you had a copyright, you know, when you're up against Hollywood, it, if somebody wants to steal it, they're going to steal it. So I, I never, I never do it. You know what I mean? Oh, but do they give you the option or, I mean, how do you, if you were to do it, how do you do it? How, you, is there a person, a place you call or I made a movie? Do I have a, can I, how do I do a copyright? How do you do that? I haven't gotten that far. I have no idea. Okay. I think when, once you publish it, technically it's copyrighted. So like, you know, when we submit on Film Freeway, it, I think it becomes published. And at that point it's copyrighted. But uh, yeah, so far as like securing that with like the character names and script, maybe I, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm sure there's a formal way to do it. I'm sure, you yeah. know, the big wigs do it, but. Yeah, yeah. I'm worried that someone's gonna steal my cartoon and take my voice, yeah. Connor's voice, and his voice out and put their own voices. Can well, they that, could that happen. They could do it now. Now think, remember they they've got deep fake. So when you go on TikTok, you've got all these actors that are not really there with their, and now they they could take your voice too. They could take your voice and it, everything's up for grabs now, man. Nothing sacred anymore. <laughs> they can steal your face and your voice now with all the technology. My friend what? Kathy Westerman, she got a, a Sasquatch photo, and then she got it copyrighted. Uh, it cost like $164, and she did it through oh. the courts. Uh, so I'm sure it's something through the government. But like Mitch said, there is so much you know, leeway uh, when you got the big wigs that they'll march right through that paperwork. But uh, it, it's a very interesting question, definitely, because it's like well, we want to protect our ideas, of course. Uh, you, we've seen it with my Sasquatch photographs, you know. People steal my photographs and then yeah. I, you know, turn that for stealing it. It's like, no, me and my mom took that picture. You know, it's, it's interesting. But I remember you had that problem. It was, a, it was a powerful thing, though. Yeah, you had a fight with somebody else. They stole your shit, and they were trying <laughs> yeah. to claim it. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? And I still have the original file on my phone, man. Just, uh... People are crazy, though, but, you know, that's what we got to deal with. But, again, it's also flattery, too. It's like, hey, you know, like, cut me at a percentage if you're racking in dough. But other than that, who cares? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Tommy Lee, when he had that uh, that sex video that leaked out. Everyone talking oh, about, yeah, yeah. They 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 were just well. Eventually, did they win a lawsuit and they got money now or something like that? I can't I, remember. Bob, there's a TV show about that, you know, on Hulu. Oh yeah, yeah. Seth Rogen's in it. Obviously, he probably directed yeah. it. He's the so one that stole it in the movie. He's he's the, he's the stealer. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I think I, we think we saw, I saw a little bit of that one. Yeah, I, but that was kind of sad. I mean, your private video. I remember it got leaked out, and then did they get money? Did they get copper? I can't remember what happened at the end, but I think they got money from it eventually. So one day, if somebody steals uh, Michael Cole's uh, film, he'll have to go through the court system, but he will win money. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> that's a good problem to have. Yeah. But they're trying to steal your stuff. Yeah, like, maybe. Wow, I, made yeah. It. <laughs> I could see Eric sitting in the courtroom with that little yeah, clip he made of the cartoon characters. That's now, my movie. I know. I know. We're we're close to the end. We're 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 at, we're at the at the finishing line. But I do want to say, you know, thank you for coming on. I know it was kind of short notice. I kind of just sent you a message Sunday or Monday say, Hey, would you come on? And you're grateful. You know, <laughs> you said yes in a short notice. And I appreciate that, man. I, I, I appreciate you uh, of coming on today. It's always fun. I love listening to people's process on what they do because it helps. It all helps sharing information on yeah. what to do. And, and it was encouraging is like you said, you know, you, you didn't have really no budget. You just get the camera, get the people. You know, I have I can't pay you. You have to do it for free and you find it and you get it done somehow. We bought pizza. That's inspiring he, a lot of ways. He <laughs> bought pizza. I would do it for pizza. If he, if Michael Cole came up to me one day and said, Hey dude, I got no money. I've got pizza and beer. 
Oh, okay. Let me get my shoes. <laughs> That's all I need. <laughs> Pizza and beer. <laughs> Bob, Bob made me feed him dinner to be in my mood. I, yeah, I had to eat dinner. Yeah, Eric made me. I, I want dinner. I want. I want Wiener Schnitzels. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad that Connor told me to check out this. Check out these short films. You you you'll like them. And I'm like, you know, I was thinking I was gonna watch a horror movie, but I'm like, wow, this is more than a horror movie. This yeah. is a real horror movie. This is <laughs> wow. Well, I definitely appreciate you guys having me on, man. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed hearing you guys' perspectives and what you thought of the films because you guys know – I feel like you picked up on things that I wanted people to pick on and pick up on, and you don't really hear that. You'll hear something totally different. You're like, well, that's not why I made the film, you know, but I think you guys got it. You noticed the things that I wanted the audience to notice, and and I appreciate Connor. I appreciate you relaying the, you know, the films to them so they could check them out, man. I mean – that's that's what we do it for. That's why we make films so they are watched. So I appreciate you guys watching the films. It means a lot. Yeah, and Very cool. you're not just a good director. You're you're a really good actor. Like I I was telling Thank Connor you. that you know to do these kind of movies, the actors have to sell it. You yeah, know? it's 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 you know dramas is really sold by the actors and like I'm like oh that is Mitchell Cole. Oh, that is the director. At first I didn't know that was you. You know, because oh, really? your, image, your image is a clean image, and the character with the hair and all that. I'm like, yeah. oh, that is him. Wow, multi talented guy. I'm like, I'm impressed. Very good, Thank man. You. Thank you. Very good. Yeah, one day you'll be at the eyes eyes wide shut parties. Also, don't worry. You'll be the corner. <laughs> you'll be leading. You'll be leading the donkey into the room in your mask naked. <laughs> donkey. Uh, it's gonna Connor happen has to... just like the other guy. These two were here at one time. They're gonna be gone. And we're be gonna gone. Say, look, guys, we got a video. No, we were on our show, and then we're gonna get this <laughs> copyright from Mitch, uh, Mitchell, and uh, Connor's like, yeah, yeah, take down our video. Or <laughs> they're like, no, nah, man, Mitchell and Connor at the Eyes Wide Shut party, man. They're in the room with the with the donkeys. We don't have that privilege. <laughs> they're famous. So we guys, uh, Connor, you got anything going on tomorrow or next day? Got anything you want to tell people? Uh, I'm I'm just working this weekend, but you know my mind is always working uh, even bigger. Uh, just planning, you know, film product projects, and then I'm gonna be premiering a video uh, probably Friday uh, on my channel. So definitely stay tuned to that. Uh, definitely check out my TikTok. I am encroaching on a hundred thousand followers. I'm really wow. proud of that. Uh, just just real pumped on spreading the word about Sasquatch and uh, the paranormal because magic is real, miracles are real. Uh, we need to understand that there is more out there, and you know our soul contains eternity, and that is powerful. Uh, so of course they're going to lie to us and try to program us and uh, try to lead us astray and divide us. So uh, stand with your two feet strong, and you know run forward with all your dreams and aspirations because Zilla Foot is in Walmart, guys. So you guys. <laughs> can make movies you guys can write books you guys can tell stories anthony just got interviewed by the new york post you know for his oh. ufo uh footage so again oh, guys, wow. we are interesting people everybody oh. here is doing it so you know be that inspiration for your family during these great times but also be be proud of your voice all of us are creators and changing the world in our own ways and we deserve to be magnified and and loud and a catalyst to more so be that inspiration you know because when i'm my goofball self hopefully mitch can find some insight and be like i can work with that you know and hopefully (laughs) dr Wu has something to talk about on his midnight show you know it's all about just bouncing ideas off one another yeah (laughs) I mean, the atmosphere, you know, I am you, you are I, we are all Chad Smith, like, that's how it all rocks, and uh, I'm all about it, you just gotta be a sponge, you know, absorb what's coming in, propel what's going out, you know, and that water sprays, so, I don't know, just be loud, be proud, and be... And tomorrow, I'll be back at 2 p.m. Pacific time, my next, uh, tomorrow is, we're gonna, we're gonna hit the world of Iceland. Uh, do oh. Icelanders really oh. believe in elves? Oh my God! Elves, yes. Tomorrow yeah. I'm going to be showing some elves, and then they're um, real. Tomorrow is supposed to be the day that that I'll be going over. Supposedly, I don't know when the cartoon, and I'll be getting with Connor, yes. writing the script this weekend. I mean, it's going to yes. be busy. 
because I'm going to have to get voice people to come in because I want yes. to premiere it next Wednesday. So yeah. Bob's going to have to show up. I'm going to have to figure I'll it be out. There. You know? so I'll be there. It's going to be. I've got lots of things busy, in my head, too. It's going to be a busy weekend. <laughs> You know, you and, can't say that. I'm gonna say that. No, you're not. Kind of like, and just say the fucking line. I'm not saying it that way. <laughs> I, I, say I, it my I, way. I, I know Eric has a videotape too. <laughs> I, I just remember it. Like, you said it for I, I said what you had to say at first, and then you said like four experimental lines. And, and like, <laughs> they're good, they're funny, but I'm like, but you have to say this because like, exactly, it's timed perfectly for the thing and it moves it to the yeah. next shot. I know that. But I want to say cool words like glass menagerie because nobody says that on camera. <laughs> what is you, that? you are the favorite character out of everybody who they all say. They're like, dude, the alien is the craziest. And uh, the, the well-respected filmmakers that I know, they love it. So, Eric, you do have the filmmaker bug. So, you know, you're not just a, a watcher or a critic. You are a filmmaker yourself, you know, and it's yeah. more than content creation because that word gets thrown out a lot. We are artists. We are we are artists, man. We're human yeah. beings, and our breath is life. And man, <laughs> figure it out. Breathe a lot per minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> figure it out. And I always ask Bob what he's gonna do, but he always, he always tells me the same thing. I just go on when I go on. Yeah, I'm just gonna drink these beers right here. <laughs> I'm go good. <laughs> I got this. So, we'll Mitchell, you get the last word before I end the show. Anything else you want to say? No, uh, uh, go follow me on Instagram because uh, our next project will be releasing. It's at Wake Up Mr. Cole. Uh, no spaces, no underscores. Uh, go check out my YouTube channel. That's where all my films are. And like I say, once this next one finishes the film circuit, we're going to put it on there. And there's going to be a lot more to come. Like I say, we're, we're in pre-production now on the next one. So, uh, And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys this next episode Wednesday, man. I'm ready, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to see what you guys come up with. <laughs> oh, man. And the pressure's on. Will they like this one? Or are they going to say, oh, he's a one-hit wonder? Don't know. <laughs> oh, no, man. Don't know. <laughs> we'll see. All right, everybody. Everybody have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.